So here's one factor that can honestly be kind of confusing, perplexing, and has led the industry to quarrel a little bit about its meaning, implementability, and implications. And that is low volatility. Low vol investing, also called betting against beta, is a factor investing strategy whereby investors pick quote unquote safer stocks as they seek for higher risk adjusted returns. Well, I don't know about you, but this kind of goes against everything I've been taught. See, in a perfect world, taking on higher risk, in this case, targeting higher volatility stocks should yield higher returns. Otherwise, market participants would eventually catch on and pile onto safer strategies and arbitrage any profits away. So what's the hot fuzz behind low vol investing? What is it? Why does it work? And how can investors potentially utilize it in their portfolios? CAPM, potentially the most well-known asset pricing model, dictates that targeting higher beta assets should in turn yield higher returns as volatility proxies risk. I think this is pretty intuitive. You probably also prefer when your portfolio goes up slowly as opposed to seeing it drop crazy amounts in a short period of time and then go back up in the same fashion. So what's going on here? Why have low vol stocks outperformed their expectations using the capital asset pricing model? Well, first off, it's important to be precise with our language. Low vol, although it can be correlated to standard deviation, is not actually measuring volatility based on this metric. Instead, it looks at beta or a stock sensitivity to the movement of the market. In theory, a stock with a beta of two would go up 10% when the market goes up 5% and would go down 10% when the market is down 5%. So it compares a stock's movement to the movement of the market and by its very nature, is taking correlation into account, so it's not usually measured in absolute terms. Now that we have an understanding of what we're actually measuring, let's review a couple of theories. In the 2014 paper, betting against Beta, Andrea Frazzini, and Lassie Peterson find that the returns of low volatility can actually be explained by real-world market frictions. See, modern portfolio theory asserts the idea that a rational investor would select the highest sharp ratio portfolio, you know, the one that maximizes the level of return for a given level of risk. And then the rational investor would then either lever up the portfolio if they wanted higher returns in exchange for higher volatility or decrease volatility and returns by combining it with a risk-free asset. So far, so good. The issue really is that Levering a portfolio is not that easy in the real world. And when margin is not as easy to come by, investors would then need to flock to higher beta securities in order to target higher risk, which then leaves room in the low volatility camp. Unconstrained investors could then take advantage of this and simply lever up low vol stocks to access higher risk adjusted returns. In fact, a paper written by the same authors argues that Warren Buffett has achieved his returns by implementing a similar strategy. Going back to betting against beta, the authors find that a beta neutral portfolio that levers up low vol stocks to a beta of one and shorts high vol stocks to a beta of one has an excess return of 0.7% monthly from 1926 to 2012 in the US. And that is a pretty interesting finding. However, let's bring things back to the real world. It's important to know that A, most investors invest in a long-only fashion, and B, they're constrained by access to leverage. So let's go back to the drawing board and ask the question, what can low volatility provide to the average investor? First off, though the findings are robust in this paper, the reason behind why this factor exists is not that clear. After all, if market participants are targeting higher beta stocks in order to achieve some level of capital efficiency in the absence of leverage, but low vol stocks can potentially do as good a job, then one could argue that investors are being irrational and should flock to lower volatility securities. Which leads me to two theories as to why low vol investing quote unquote works. First, there's the behavioral argument. Investors tend to prefer lottery stocks, even if it's counterproductive and sometimes flat out irrational. In the paper, maxing out stocks as lotteries and the cross section of expected returns, the authors find that investors tend to overvalue high vol stocks and overestimate their chances of success. In conclusion, investors may be willing to pay more for stocks that exhibit extreme positive returns 
and thus these stocks exhibit lower returns in the future. Not just that, but low volatility may actually be targeting other well-known factors at times, such as value, quality, and investment, which could potentially explain why investors generally avoid this section of the market. So what should we make of this? How can investors implement low volatility in their portfolio? I asked this question to Alpha Architect co-CIO Jack Vogel. Here's what he had to say. A long-only investor who wants to target low volatility can primarily do so in two ways. First, the investor can directly target low volatility and build a diversified portfolio of stocks that are considered to be less volatile or have lower betas. Now, one potential issue with this approach from a long-only perspective is that low volatility may have some overlap at times with some other well-known factors such as value and quality. Now, that's one way to do it, but a second way to use low volatility is to use it as a part of a screening process in an attempt to manage risk. So, for example, one can target the momentum factor while using an additional low volatility filter in an attempt to eliminate some lottery-type high momentum stocks, thereby attempting to improve the risk-adjusted returns instead of targeting low volatility directly. Here at Alpha Architect, our goal is to empower investors through education. We're an asset management firm that focuses on delivering affordable alpha to our clients. If you want more educational content like this, head to alphaarchitect.com. I'll see you there.